Hi, seventh grade. Welcome to math class. Today, our job is to get ready for the test tomorrow in the blue book on chapter seven. So I have prepared a mini practice test. It's got 10 questions on it, and it's going to cover a few of the concepts that we studied. What I do want you to do, however, is go through all those questions and then also look in your book on page um, 328 for the practice test that they have at the end of the chapter. Look through those problems, make sure you understand how to do all of those, and uh, then work on these problems as well. So for our time together right now, I'm gonna pick three of the problems that are on your practice test worksheet, and uh, we're gonna go through those problems right now. So give me a second to share my screen with you. And, oops, let's see. Here we go. All right, so, okay. So again, right here, I just made a note about looking over the questions in your, in your book on that page right there. And then I'm gonna post the answers to this test uh, practice test and then the book answers. I'll post those at three o'clock today. I really do want you to kind of work together with each other, uh, text each other and confirm your answers before you look to see what the printed answers are. Okay, let's begin. I'm gonna, so this is I think 10 questions and I'm gonna start with this first question right here. You are asked to find the perimeter of this parallelogram. And so the only length that they haven't told you in this um, for the perimeter is this guy right here. And we know because it's parallelogram, that's the uh, same length here. And you're going to notice that this is the hypotenuse of your uh, this right triangle right here. So I'll highlight this right triangle right here. And this side of your parallelogram is the hypotenuse. So we need to go after and find out what that length is. So we're gonna set up our Pythagorean theorem. Six squared plus 13 squared equals C squared. And so I know that that is just gonna give me 36 plus 169, and that equals C squared. Well, these two numbers added together give me 205, which is C squared. So now I know the square root of 205 is C. Well, I need to figure out what 205 is. So we are gonna go ahead and estimate what that is. So let's use our, let's use some logic and reasoning because we don't get to use a calculator. So we're gonna start with, um, let's see. I know that 205 is a little bit more than 196 and it's a little bit less than 225. And these are the numbers I picked because this is 14 squared and 225 is 15 squared. And so we got to figure out what is the square root of all these numbers. Well, of 205. Okay, so, oops, there we go. Sorry about that. Alrighty, so let's get that figured out. This number here, so we, we know that this is uh, 196, and the gap between 196 and 205, this distance here, we know is 9. And then the gap between 196 and uh, all the way out to 225, we know this gap right here, this distance is 29. So I'm gonna say we're subtracting, but remember we're using the absolute value because we're talking about a distance. So the ratio of the distances is 9 29 And we're gonna approximate that. We were gonna, we're gonna do long division here and you're gonna find out that that decimal equivalent rounds to zero and three tenths. Okay, so we know that we started with 14 is the lower estimate and then our decimal is 3 tenths. So the square root of 205 is approximately equal to 14 
and 3 tenths. So that's this value right here, 14 and 3 tenths. So now to finish this problem, all I need to do is add up the perimeter right here. So you can see that 6 plus 8, that's going to give me 14. And then we're going to add the value that we just found, 14.3. And then if we just multiply this by 2, we'll get the perimeter. So I'm looking at 2 times 28 and 3 tenths. And that gives me a final answer of 56.6. And that would be feet. So there you have it. That's the first answer. So the idea here is, this is in the way. The idea here, of course, is can you approximate a square root to the nearest tenth? And you will have to do that tomorrow. All right, let's try this next problem right here. So, excuse me, I'm looking at 7 and 84 hundredths. I need the square root of that. Well, I want to, instead of doing it as 7 and 84 hundredths, let's just estimate this. Let's just calculate it out at 784. And then we will figure out how the decimal is placed after that. So I'm looking at 784 and I need to figure out where is that going to be? What perfect squares is 784 right in between? And so if you think about it and you use your number sense, you know that 625 is going to be a little bit less than 784, which is going to be a little bit less than 900. Okay, so I picked those because, well, 625, that's 25 squared, and 900, that is 30 squared. So the square root of 784 needs to lie in between 25 and 30. And this is where we use our little number trick. So I'm looking at 784 and I notice it, let, it ends in a four. So I'm gonna ask myself, what are all the, uh, what numbers have a square that ends in the digit four? So two times two, that will end in a four. Anything with an eight, eight times eight is gonna be 64, that ends in a four. So those are the only two numbers, two and eight there, when you square them, that last digit will end in a four. So that means I'm looking for a two-digit number in between 25 and 30 whose last digit is a two or an eight. Well, it has to be eight. So now I know that 28 squared is 784. Okay, but now let's go back and remember because this original problem is seven and 84 hundredths. So that just means that if I'm taking the square root of seven and 84 hundredths, my answer is two and eight tenths. I just moved the decimal. So this problem has now just reduced to two and eight tenths plus seven and nine tenths. And that gives me 10 and 7 tenths. So yeah, 10 and 7 tenths. <laughs> okay, so that was the final answer there. And then we just have one more question, and it is about this quarterback who's throwing a 20-yard pass to a receiver. Now, okay, the actual pass that the football player threw is this distance right here but he's getting credit for this nice vertical distance that he threw, and that is 20 yards. And so this distance right here is eight and a third according to the, um, to the, the diagram. So we need to find this length of this horizontal line. So we're gonna use our Pythagorean theorem. So eight and a third squared plus 20 squared equals C squared. And so I'm going to make an improper fraction. By the way, on the test, this is all, I want to see all of this work. Please write your equations out for me. Okay, eight and one third is really 25 thirds. And we need to square that. And then two, or sorry, 20 squared, of course, is 400. And that equals C squared. So when I square this out, this is gonna be 625 ninths 
plus, well, I'm gonna to have to add fractions, so I better get a common denominator. This is 36 hundred ninths, and that's what c squared is. So when I add these together, I get 400, or sorry, 4,225 ninths, that's c squared. And so I have to take the square root of both sides, which means I need to take the square root of 4,425. 4, well, let me see if I can go off to the side of the paper here. Well, I don't need to. So we're looking for perfect squares that are gonna sandwich between uh, ones less than 4,225 4, and ones a little bit more. So where, where am I gonna find those numbers? Well, how about 3,600? That's a good one. And how about 4,900? That's another good one because this is gonna be 60 squared and this one is gonna be 70 squared. Okay, so my, my square root is going to lie somewhere between 60 and 70. And now let's use that last digit trick. My last digit of my perfect square is 5. The only number that is, when you square it ends with a 5 is 5 itself. So I'm looking for a two-digit number between 60 and 70 that ends in a 5 that will be the square root of 4,225. And so the answer there is 65. So going back over here to this problem, I was at the square root of 4,225 over the square root of nine, which is going to be 65 thirds, which after you reduce that, you end up with 21 and two thirds yards. That's how long the pass actually was. Okay, that is the, those are the only problems I'm gonna do. And so the rest of it is for you to look at. Remember, do please look at this page here because this practice test does not have any distance problems on it. And you will, be able, you will need to find the distance between two points on the test tomorrow. I'll be in my conference today at nine and one. Please come and see me and I will post the answers at three o'clock. Have a great day.